Continuing with the American Made Red Dot series, we're moving on to the Sig Sauer Romeo 8. I'm going to unbox it here on video and go through all the accessories that it comes with. Have a lens cloth and the owner's manual. Take a look through the owner's manual later. I am going to note that Sig Sauer did provide this optic to us for review. We have the sight itself. have a tool the torx bit in here it can go in there there's a socket driver for attaching the sight to your upper or mounting rail itself we have a cr123 battery and a kill flash that can snap on to the front of the lens the Romeo 8 is powered by a single CR123 battery. And unscrew the battery cap here. It does have a little wire for tension to hold it in place to the optic itself. Looks like positive side goes up. Drop that down in there. And screw it back in place. And there is an O-ring around the cap for water resistance. Okay. Now there are two built-in lens covers. Flip up the rear, flip down in the front. And now let's see if I can get the dot to turn on. There we go. All right, I'm gonna give the manual a review, then walk through all the features. All right, all the controls for brightness adjustment and functions of the optic are done with these two buttons. To turn the sight on, you can press either the up or down button and release and it will turn on. To turn it off, you can hold either button down for three seconds and it will then turn off. So I'm gonna hit the down button to turn it on this time, it turns on and hit the up button for three seconds to turn it off. There are 13 brightness settings, 10 daylight, and three night vision. The Romeo 8T has four different reticle options. The simplest being a two MOA red dot, the next being a two MOA dot with 65 MOA circle, and then there are BDC variants of each. The dots are spaced at 5 MOA, 9 MOA, and 15 MOA below the center dot. It would be up to the end user to calculate their ballistic trajectory to make use of these dots. Now, if you leave the sight idle for two minutes, it will turn off automatically and will turn back on when you pick it up. So I'm going to set it down and we'll see how that works. All right, so I'm going to leave it here stationary for two minutes, and we'll see if it turns off and turns back on when I move it. All right, so idle, it did in fact turn off, so I'm just going to shake it. A very slight movement does turn it back on, so we verified that the shake-awake technology does work. The windage and elevation adjustments are graduated in half MOA, and they are external. The windage being on the left side of the optic and the elevation being at the rear of the optic. On the bottom of the site, we can see the mounting interface. There's a single clamp for your Picatinny rail, two indexing points, and a cross bolt. The clamp is tightened in place with this hex nut. You can use the wrench that comes with the sight to tighten this to 85 inch pounds. In an emergency, you can use the cap for the battery to tighten it, but the manual cautions that you cannot tighten to the minimum torque spec required. But I suppose having it there is better than nothing. So you can in fact use that to help tighten the nut.
Personally, I would put some Loctite on the threads here before tightening this down to make sure that it doesn't walk loose on you. On the bottom of the site, it is labeled as assembled in the USA, which in all likelihood means it is built using at least some foreign components. It is, however, used by the U.S. military in some capacity, according to SIG, so it does have to meet certain requirements for manufacture in the United States. I already tightened the site down, but I did want to show how the tool works. The socket just goes into the end of the wrench included with the site there. Put it on the nut like that, and then you're going to crank it down to 85 inch-pounds. Now, you're not going to be able to tell how much 85 inch-pounds is by hand, but generally speaking, if you can't tighten it, just using your thumb like this at the full end of the wrench, it's going to be good enough. All right, water test of the SIG Romeo 8T. I'm going to put it in the fish tank for a half hour. You can see that it's on. It's going to go into the fish tank. I'll get some video from the side, show the optics still on. There we go. All right, so we'll check back on them at the end of the half hour. All right, SIG Romeo 8T, took it out of the fish tank, blew it off with compressed air, and it's clear there's no water inside the lenses, so it passes the fish tank test. Starting with two rounds to the center. Going to the top. Right. Bottom. Left. All right, starting with the center. Now the top. Right. Bottom. Left. Let's go look. The Romeo 8T clearly performed superbly for us both on the parallax test. Unlike our previous red dot evaluations, I was able to test the Romeo 8T at some local matches. On the clock, I really like the big window for tracking moving targets like this spinner and transitioning across targets and rapidly acquiring them. Pairing the 8T up with the Juliet 4 magnifier really shows how crisp the reticle is. Under magnification, the dot is perfectly concentric and actually looks better than my Aimpoint T2 that until this point, I believed was the cleanest red dot that I had ever used. The Romeo 8T combined with the magnifier allows me to easily go one for one on this intermediate range rifle stage out to 300 yards. The cleaner the dot, the easier it is to shoot at range with or without a magnifier. The magnifier is really just for spotting the targets against the desert scape backdrop. In practice, I preferred the 2 MOA dot with 65 MOA circle over the other reticle options. The circle helped draw my eye to the center to pick up the tiny dot, even on intermediate range stages like this. And inside 300 yards, I never found the BDC dots to be necessary. Without a magnifier, the dots tend to just make the reticle busier and wouldn't be of much help to most people. The glass itself is very clear, and I didn't experience any weird optical effects when shooting into shadows like on this stage. The large window made it easy to acquire a sight picture when shooting through awkward positions on this VTAC barricade. This prop also validated our parallax test in that I could still make hits regardless of the angle or head position behind the sight. 
All right, so you've entered two matches with the SIG Romeo 8T. And this has passed the water immersion test, right? Right. It also passed our parallax test with flying colors. Yep. And I will say that, in my opinion, I haven't used it in a match, but this is the crispest, cleanest dot I've seen of any of the ones we've tested. I would agree. Okay, so how's it gone at the match? Um, both matches I used it at, it worked great. Um, the Rio Salado match, I got to do some long range out to 300 with it. Mm -hmm. And at this match, I got to shoot out to 200 with it. Mm -hmm. Um, I did use the magnifier conjunction with it for those stages, mm -hmm. um, but under magnification, the dot is perfectly clear. Mm -hmm. Oh, it, okay. And that's an important thing to keep in mind with the red dot. If you do want to use it with a magnifier, if it's not clear under magnification and the dot looks messy, it's not really going to help you. So it being clear under magnification with their Juliet 4 magnifier mm -hmm. is, a, is a big benefit. Now that said, this got an MSRP of around 780, mm -hmm. which is of course not market price. Oh, I'm really happy that in the Red Dot American series we've done, finally we have one that I think we can flat out. I don't know what you think. I'm going to say this thing's awesome. Yeah, I, I like it a lot. The only the only downside to it is it's big, mm -hmm. and it takes up a lot of rail space. But it takes a CR123 and has like a 100,000 hour battery life. That, that's the trade-off is it has a uh, such a long battery life, and the window is so big, I found it really fast to use, particularly from like the weird... Uh, awkward positions we encounter. It was really quick to get a sight picture through it and even if the reticle was offset to one side or another, it was perfectly fine. Now it, cups, uh, it comes up armored like this and with the lens caps, is that correct? Yeah, it, it, the, it comes with those out of the box, so you can even use those with something mounted behind it. Interesting. So, and the mount. And the mount is so, built in. So, in, and, you know, you know, it's funny. As we did red dots, when re, we seen this, we seen red dots get larger diameter and then they kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller to like micro size. Mm -hmm. I find that I actually like a wider field of view in my glass, even with a red dot. Yeah, if you're, if you're not concerned about the weight or the size, um, I think the bigger sights are better to go with for battery life and for the bigger window. Mm. So. Well, I'm going to say that the, the SIG Romeo 8T, with its battery life and its features, up armored and the incredibly crisp, clean dot, man, I want to hear what you say, but I'm going to say this is a recommend. Yeah, I definitely recommend it um, for if you want a full-size red dot, uh, and weight is not a concern. So, um, worked great. I'm going to keep using it at matches, uh, even after we're done with this evaluation. So, I'm really happy with it. Now, in disclosure, this one was sent to us. Yeah, SIG provided this one for the review. But all the ammunition and everything we used to do the review was purchased. Correct. Okay, so, in reality, we bought some of these. Some of these were provided to us, but as you know here at InRange, we will give something given to us for free, a bad review, if it deserves it. And you've seen that in other videos. So this one didn't. This one deserves a good review. So I'd like to thank the patrons for making it possible to do this kind of content because all the ammunition, time, cost, all the expenditures that occur, and some of the dots we have purchased or sighting systems have come from Patreon supporters and allows us to do no gods, no masters, no overlords reviews where we give you an honest interpretation of what we've experienced. And in this one, I'm happy to say we can recommend one for once. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned and share with your friends.